Next up, on 100 yards of football, Vincent Turner goes in on another legendary series. This next player, ladies and gentlemen, grew up around sports. He not only played Little League Baseball and did gymnastics and was a good swimmer, he comes from his family is a football royalty. His uncle Frank was an All-American at Iowa who became a longtime scout for the Minnesota Vikings after playing three seasons in the NFL. And his father was a coach at Jackson State and Kentucky State before arriving at Tennessee State. Ladies and gentlemen, Vincent Turner does a deep dive on Pittsburgh's black quarterback, the first player, the first black player, to start an NFL game and make it capable for players like Doug Williams and others to come along. Vincent Turner goes in on Joe Jefferson Street Gilliam Jr. here on 100 Yards of Football. Boy, boy, boy. Joe Gilliam. Excuse me. What more can I say? You live this lifetime, and um, like I said, I've been blessed on a lot of things that's helped me in my life, and especially following college football. But I said one of the greatest joys of my life has been able to see a lot of great players play up close and personal. Even though Mr. Gilliam went to glory in 2010, I can honestly say at 10 years old, he was clearly one of the top five football players I've seen play up close and personal. Everyone knows the story. My father used to take us up there to watch Tennessee State one game a year to play. Back when I was young, starting in 1966, and I saw the great Eldridge Dickey. But I was also presented the opportunity to see this great man play at Tennessee State, Joe Gilliam. And I know his career then ended the way like it should have him being drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers and winning two Super Bowl rings. But all I know about Joe Street Gilliam is that he was a hell of a quarterback. That's no question in my mind. He's the best guy I've seen up close and personal that can throw the football. He had an arm that it was unbelievable, man. There's no doubt. His arm. It's the best I've seen with my own two eyes. He could throw a football, man, and it, the ball will come off his arm like a cannon. Boom! Man, he was special. And he played at a time at Tennessee State University that they won back-to-back -back black, black college national championships. And then you think about the football season in 1971, obviously Mr. Gilliam playing at Tennessee State University, he wasn't getting a lot of pool nationally. So on the college football level, you were hearing about John Reeves at Florida, Eddie Phillips at Texas, Pat Sullivan at Auburn, Jim Fossil at Long Beach State, Brian Sipe at San Diego State, and Van Brunson in Nebraska. But there was no talk about Joe Street Gilliam. And I remember the 1970 season. I'm going to start with that. He led Tennessee State to a 10 0 record that year, won a black college football national championship, beat Southwest Louisiana in the Grantland Rice Bowl 26 25, had two touchdowns in the game, one rushing. Then he came back in 1971. That Tennessee State team went eight and one, beat McNeese State. He threw for three touchdowns. And you look at the course of his career in his two season at Tennessee State, five thousand two hundred thirteen yards passing, but he had fifty touchdowns. That was a large number back in seventy and seventy one. And following him and seeing him play up close and personal. It just brought back so many memories. Then I think about the Tennessee State team that he was on, the players that he played with, Sonny Davis, Dave Davis, John Holland, Vernon Holland, Clifford Brooks, Ed Tutal Jones, Joe Sweet, 
Ollie Smith, Larry Woods, and Bill West. They all of them got drafted in the National Football League as Mr. Gilliam Dunn. Then I think about the 1970 team. He was on there. I scored their opponents, 396 to 144. Then I think about that 1971 team. I scored their opponents 403 to 151. But I think about the games I saw him play personally. 1971, when they played Florida a and and beat them 58, and Florida a and had that offensive tackle by the name of Henry Lawrence that played with the Oakland Raiders. Then they beat Kentucky State in 1970, when Mr. Gilliam had seven touchdown passes, and they won 62 to 7. Then I think about in 1970, same year, October 3rd, they beat a real good Texas Southern team. 41-9, they had Julius Adams and Mike Holmes that played in the National Football League. But during all that time, going up there watching them play, it brought back so many memories in 70 and 71. And I get to thinking about the great class that ain't too proud to beg by the temptations in 1966. Then I think about when a man loves a woman, Percy Slade. Then I think about Yellow Submarine by the Beatles. Then hold on, I'm coming. I'm a soul man, Sam and Dave. Then Three Dog Night, Joy to the World. Then I think about One Bad Apple, the Osmonds. Then I think about Undisputed Truth, Smiling Faces. I think about all those songs when I think about Joe Gilliam and going up to see him play at Tennessee State back then. At 3,500 John Mayer Boulevard at Hale Stadium. 10,000 people. And he throwing the football like I never seen a quarterback do. The skill set, the arm strength A, plus, the ability to throw sideline A, plus from one hash mark to the other. The release quickness, A+, plus. the accuracy, short, medium, A+, plus. the poise he had in the pocket, A+, plus. pressure wasn't even a factor. He hung in the pocket, A+, plus. decisive under A+, A plus. reading the defenses, A+, plus. setting up quickness, A+, plus. the ball handling, A+, plus. the leadership, A+, plus. and the football intelligence, A+. Plus. And I'm going to be honest today, for him to get drafted in the 11th round in the 1972 NFL draft, being a 273 selection overall, that's what's a, a point of disrespect. Because clearly he was better than the Heisman Trophy winner, Pat Sullivan. He was better than John Reeves of Florida. Because you want to know why he became the first African-American quarterback to start a season opener against the Baltimore coach and led the Steelers to a 30 to nothing win over Baltimore. It was on the cover of Sports Illustrated in 1974. And I was 14 years old at the time. I don't know what happened in Pittsburgh. It's been so many stories that came out that led to him benching. He was benched with a 4-1-1 one, and one overall record. That's different people, different teammates that came out and said a lot of things about that situation. And obviously that affected Mr. Mr. Gilliam because after he was benched, things didn't turn out for him. We know what happened. I don't have to go there today. He don't want him to ask for ball. But I know this, Terry Bradshaw, who ended up getting his job back and winning four Super Bowls with the team that Joe Gilliam started with as a starter to open the 74 season, said this about Joe Gilliam. He gave my job back. It's not like I beat him out. It's not like I beat him out. Think about the words. 
here's a guy that was a first round pick in 1970 that lost his job to a guy that got drafted in the 11th round and said he gave my job back. I didn't beat him out. The legendary Terry Bradshaw who's a Hall of Famer. And linebacker Andy Russell, who was a part of the Steelers, said Joe Gillen was the most talented football player I've ever seen. Franco Harris said that he had the best arm I've ever seen somebody throw the football. Franco Harris, another Hall of Famer. But you can read between the lines. Being an African-American quarterback in the mid-70s, even the 80s, that was, that was something that wasn't a play that was going to happen too soon in America. I'm sorry. But obviously it affected Mr. Gilliam and the rest is history passed in 2010. But I know one thing for sure. I saw him play up close and personal. And I saw him play in 70 and 71. And I've never seen anybody throw the football better than him. The arm strength was off the change. And there's been some quarterbacks that's had some big guns in the National Football League, big guns and arms. John Elway, Dan Marino, Jeff George. And to my guys that had good, powerful arms, Michael Vick. But I tell you this, and even Tom Brady has won seven championships, Super Bowls, who's considered the GOAT. All those guys I just mentioned, their arm was not even close to Joe Gilliam. And I would put my life on it. He could throw the football, man. One of my most favorite football players, and it's so sad and so unfortunate that the situation happened to him in Pittsburgh. Probably a lot of it was his fault, no question about it. But there was some pressure in Pittsburgh, you know what I mean, being a black quarterback. But I take away the good stories about Mr. Gilliam. The first African American to start a season open in the NFL history and led his team to a 30 to 0 win over the Baltimore Colts. And as the great words of Terry Bradshaw, he gave my job back. It's not like I beat him out. So if you like the video today, please come in and share it. It's been an honor, a pleasure to talk about Joe Gillian from my state of Tennessee, the great state of Tennessee. I just wish Joe Gillian just would have played it smart. You know what I mean? Special thanks to my producer, Mr. Logan Landers, for making it happen for me today. And a special thanks for the introduction of the greatest voice, Mr. Mark Bass. So when I think about Joe Street Gilliam, it's only one song that comes up that I wish he would have paid attention to. Smiling faces, smiling faces. Pretend to be your friend of the evil that lurks within. Smiling faces, smiling faces, they don't tell the truth. I love you, Mr. Gilliam. Lord is taking care of you, sir. I just wish you would have been listening to the words of smiling faces by the undisputed truth. If you like the video today, please come in and share it. I surely, surely appreciate it here on 100 Yards Football. One more time, special thanks. 
because I would not be making it and I would not be having the opportunity to do this to my producer, Mr. Logan Landers. And you know what's really why God is in this plan? See, over here, 100 yards of football, we're a lot of older guys. And this gentleman that's been doing an outstanding job, as you've been seeing our great videos that's appeared on Bleed, on YouTube, the gentleman is still a baby. He's only 23 years old. Outstanding future in front of him. And, of course, to the gentleman I consider the greatest voice, Alfred Hitchcock, Paul Harvey. And a great Fred Cook he used to be the voice announcer for the University of Memphis State Athletics. My man, Mark Bass. Thank you. Be blessed. Here on 